I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer at all, but <gasps> if this is the direction that our society is headed, I'm a little bit concerned. So what are this you, is essentially is... Are we concerned about women just being goofy and silly on the internet or men consistently talking about how women are destroying the West for being what? What? By making TikToks? Oh, yeah. Super not the war. Super not poverty. Super not starvation. Definitely not the economy, which men are primarily in charge of. No, no, no. That's not destroying the West. It's women on TikTok. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay, guys. Let's go ahead and get started. This is from Courtney Ryan. Do you guys watch Courtney Ryan? I'm actually, I'm kind of into her. I'm kind of into her. She's like kind of a vibe, but also I, I feel like Courtney Ryan's the kind of girl and I really like Courtney's stuff. So like if Courtney, you know what I mean? If she hears this, sometimes I feel like I'm such a bitch, but like Courtney's feels to me like the kind of woman that is used to being around really good men and almost has little to no interaction with toxic men. Because sometimes she's, but then at the same time, she tippy toes around her audience's feelings all the time. Because I watch like almost all the videos she puts out. And she's always very cautious that when she's like hyping up women to like remind the men, they're like, oh, don't worry. Like, I see you too. And it's very interesting the way she does it. A lot of women do this. They have to tippy toe around men's feelings because men are so volatile and emotional, which I totally understand. You know what I mean? But it is one of those things where I think it's a little funny. Because sometimes when she talks, it feels like she doesn't know men the way that I'm like, really? Like, okay, even the title of this video is so cute. It's, I can't believe men are paying for this. Can you not? Can you not? Like, can you not? It's so, it's hot. It's interesting. It's weird. It's um, abnormal. It's, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of a, I don't know. I'm Maybe I'm just like in too many of the weird bubbles to be like, yeah, NPC trends make sense to me, I guess, you know? Okay, ready? Let's watch this. Also, watch Not So Erudite's latest members live show or slash any video she has currently coming out about Andrew Tate. Very interesting. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan. And bye now. How's that volume? I'm sure you've seen Anybody these NPC tell me? live stream NPC. girls. Uh, the Good AI volume. I'm just testing pretending it to by be talking robot, over her. Live stream girls. And we are going to talk about it here today. Let's watch one together to make sure we are all on the same page, and then I yes, will share please. my thoughts. Yes, strong I love woman. Her. Grab, grab. Yes, strong woman. Yes, strong. <gasps> Thank you, Tony. Can I eat it? So cute. Oh, bitch, 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 bitch. Balloon. <gasps> Take your Anna. Take your Maya. Hey. Take your Anna. Take your Jolan. Take your Anusti. Take your Erika. Mm. Take your Jolan. Take your A. Take your Emma. Take your Maribel. Mmm, ice cream so good. Gang gang. Hey! Gang gang. Balloon. Hey! No, this one isn't one of the good. You can't do the one where she's yelling at her kid or whoever's in the background. You gotta do one where she's not distracted. Oh, thank you, baby. This is so cute. Thank you, Antony. Watermelon. Come Wow, amazing. Take a shimmer. She's not supposed to be. You got to get one where she's not distracted because she's breaking character too much. But OK, fun fact, because I didn't realize this when I was first watching it. I was wondering why she had a straining iron in her hand. I was like, what is this for? If you guys notice, there is popcorn uh, kernels like in the straightener. And then she uses a straightener like this and it pops the popcorn. <laughs> that is so funny to me. Or slay, huh? Cat all right, that's enough. I've seen enough. There are some other girls doing this as well. I could never I saw see one enough. girl who had like elf ears on, who does a lot of cosplay stuff. She's very as it popular, is. yeah. Um, and now she's doing this because there are big bucks she looks to great. be had here now, apparently. And I'll be honest, mm -hmm. at first I thought I really don't even know what to say. <laughs> on one hand, I am not surprised at all. I mean, there are girls literally selling their bath water and farts in a jar. I've had people ask me. Good times good times wow see I don't I want to do things that are like cute or pretty like I just put out this new like shower pink themed thingy majig video and I thought it was really cute on my OF like I was like really happy with it but it's like really pretty like an elegant and like sweet and like it's nice I could not sell farts in a jar there's like nothing cute about that me men specifically if they can buy a pair of my shoes so this is nothing new here obviously but it just continues to get a little bit more depressing by the day i don't mean to be a debbie downer at all but if this is the direction that our society is headed 
I'm a little bit concerned. So what are this you, is essentially is. Are we concerned about women just being goofy and silly on the internet or men consistently talking about how women are destroying the West for being what? What? By making TikToks? Oh, yeah. Super not the war. Super not poverty. Super not starvation. Definitely not the economy, which men are primarily in charge of. No, no, no. That's not destroying the West. It's women on TikTok. Oh, yeah, definitely. Is girls pretending to be AI robots or NPC <laughs> characters and spending hours upon hours in a live stream making strange noises and acting out emojis. I will personally admit here, there is no way I could do this without going absolutely insane. Even watching a little clip of it, I just feel like my brain is rotting. Okay, fun fact though, I came up, because I have TikTok now, so I've been doing it. Um, I was on TikTok and I found a bunch of the boys doing it, like men. And honestly, it's kind of fun to watch them. Like the guys are funny too, and they're humorous, and there's something about it that's really wholesome in a way, like it feels nice. Hi everybody. Um, hi, Lakara, I see you. And so, like, it is really nice, this idea of doing this. Like, okay, again, I ask myself every day, what kind of a YouTuber do I want to do? Want to be? What do I spend my time doing? I spend my time doing this stuff. Like, calming people down, but also being, like, angry if I need to be, you know? Like, I always can be when it comes to certain subjects. But, like, in general, okay, do we really think TikToks and girls being cute on the internet are the reason, like, the West is failing or the world's failing? Or do we genuinely think it's the constant violence, segregation, destabilization, d oh my god, stabulate, stab, stab, oh my god, I can't talk. Oh my god, what word am I looking for? My brain just had a complete meltdown. Destabilize, oh my god, guys, my brain is literally having a stroke. <laughs> Do we really think it's a stuttering girl on the internet? <laughs> or do we think it's something a little bit more intense, right? So I just think, like, I understand. This is this is the same thing I've heard my whole life, right? Like, oh, if the gays are legalized, then the world's going to end. If porn is legalized and accepted, the world's going to end. If this is accepted, the world's going to end. Hasn't the porn world been ending since, like, the beginning? It just feels a little silly, right, to be worrying about women on the internet when you really should be worrying about much more important issues. But I understand why someone like Courtney, who's very sweet and very normal, very normie, would be like, this is the most shocking thing ever. I mean, is it though? Like, is it though? And degenerating away to nothing. Uh, so I have to give credit where credit is due. It does seem to require a little bit more work than say mm -hmm. taking a picture of your butt and putting it on OnlyFans. Uh, but I digress. I should also add here, as I mentioned earlier, these- Why is everyone so eager to work? Why does everyone want to work so hard so you can complain? Like everything is work, right? But like, why are we judging people's work except to uplift our own ego? Who cares if someone has an easy job? Good for you. I'm so happy for you. I wish my job was way easier, even though it's way easy compared to other jobs. But my job stresses me out, like all jobs do. It just stresses me out the least. I pick work that stresses me out the least. That's how I pick work. Are people actually out here privileged enough to pick work because it's fun and because it's perfect and no days are stressful? Like I like my job, it's the best job, but it is also stressful. And so again, I don't know, when I hear somebody making money easily, I'm like, good for you. Can I make money easy? But what's easy to them is not easy to us. And that's the difference. If this was easy for us, I think we'd probably do it, but it's not easy. It's not easy dealing with hateful comments. It's not easy being told you're a hoe. It's not easy getting denigrating comments in your DMs. It's not easy being displayed on people's YouTube thumbnails as that hoe over there. It's not easy being a sex worker. So you might say, oh, it's easy to take a butt picture and like post it on OF, then do it if it's so easy. But it's not easy, is it? It just seems easy because the concept is simple to you but you don't wanna bear any of the consequences that these girls and boys have to face by being OF content creators. So it's not easy. It's just simple. And so you think it's easy. These girls are making bank doing this, thousands per stream. Uh, but now that this pinky doll girl has blown up and everyone's talking about it and discovering her, she's, killing her, it. she's, she's killing making it. far more. So I think like last week or the week before, they were saying she was making 5K a stream. Let's I don't go, know what girl. she's up to now. Um, but if you can make $5,000 in one stream and you stream every yes, day, ma'am, that's a lot of money. That yes, adds up. That is a Good lot for her. of money. And who's paying for this? Not me. 
probably not other girls. Oh, that is my one question. How do people make money on the TikToks? Do people give them? Because like I've seen them, but I haven't purchased anything. So I don't actually know how they make money from the streams. Because on TikTok streams, can people donate to you? Should I be on TikTok? Do I need to be multi-streaming to different platforms right now? Should I have my phone out and just stream to TikTok while I'm talking to you guys? Like, what is... What, how do they exactly make money? Single, lonely, or single and lonely men. And really the reason I wanted to talk about this specifically <clears throat> is because, yes, it seems stupid, it seems silly, it seems like something that's not worth talking about, but it leads into a much bigger problem and bigger picture here. You know, the amount of AI scams, of AI dating profiles, AI <clears throat> chatbots, okay. et cetera, targeted at single lonely men are growing by the day. I fear that moving in this direction with AI means moving farther away from real relationships and even just genuine human connection. I'm starting to wonder if the future of dating is going to look like Blade Runner. And I don't know about you, but to me, that's a really scary thought. And the sad reality here is that so many men are yearning for a connection, a community, a friend, a significant other, and men tend to struggle with isolation and loneliness far more than women do. And I think which is so ironic since men tote themselves being so emotionally stoic compared to women. Why are you struggling being alone, my bro? Why do single women over 55 have happier like lives than men over 55 and single? Every time I hear that stereotype, and this isn't all men obviously, but like that stereotype that men make of women being emotional and sensitive and all that stuff, I swear to God they're talking about themselves. But ultimately, the group of sensitive men should belong to the group of sensitive women. Because some of us aren't like tippy-toeing like that. Some of us aren't so lonely that we're upset we have to go to AI. Some of us are just like, oh, cool, AI. Cool. That's really convenient. How nice. Like, at the end of the day, none of us are owed relationships. Like, no, none of us are guaranteed anything. And so technology building... If technology... Hmm, how do I say this? I understand... Hmm, okay. I understand the concern, but I just never blame the things. I'm too, I think I'm too conservative for this. I always blame the people. You can't blame the thing. You got to blame the why of the individual. If the individual consciousness hasn't had the relationship with itself to understand why they're engaging in the AI, that is the issue. It's not that the AI exists. Look, this could exist forever and so many of the quote unquote lonely men in my life would never find it because they're not looking for it, because they're having a different relationship with their loneliness. And what does it even mean to be lonely, right? So again, I always feel like everyone wants to blame or say like, oh, here's the rise of this. Well, the rise of this is coming at the fact that like, yeah, there's customers paying for it, so these people are making money, fuck them. But the individuals have to have a relationship with themselves to know why they're even seeking it out in the first place, right? Like in an ideal world, you'd be seeking out sex work because you're having fun with the content creator or enjoying it. It wouldn't always be because you're lonely. What does loneliness mean if you're just having a relationship with a screen anyways? You don't even know how to like fulfill that loneliness. Put a band-aid over your loneliness if you want. But if you're not even cognizant enough to know that that's not a solution, then we're not even, I'm not even worried at that point about the AI. I'm worried about you and your inability to know you're not even at a place to recognize that this is a cope. You know what I mean? Like. There is a way to have a healthy relationship with sex workers and it's not convincing yourself that it isn't a job for them and it's not convincing yourself that they're shitty for even having the job in the first place and it's not to convince yourself that it's their fault that you're lonely or that you're poor or that you keep giving them money. You know what I'm saying? Oh God, I am such a conservative. Listen to me. Even though the conservatives complain about it all the time. Oh, like, ugh, anyways, the point is, is I don't like this idea of blaming the AI when the AI is just a reaction from companies to make money off a populace that's already begging for it. The people, dem like the people are the reason the world is the way it is. Like we are the reason the world is the way it is. So we are the reason it even needed to exist in the first place. These girls wouldn't be doing this if they didn't have an audience for it. But you guys demanded it. You guys wanted it. So why wouldn't they do it? And then you're going to blame the AI or blame the women. It's like, why? Why? Oh, okay. So Lakara says apparently the emojis function as a donation. Very small amounts though. Interesting. 
Lacaro says, says, oh man, I would never want to be a public figure. I couldn't handle the stress of people judging me. I prefer my anonymity for sure. I think there's always pros and cons, right? It's definitely anxiety inducing. You know what I mean? The idea of being like a quote unquote public figure. Kay says, we've been trained to believe good things only come from hard work. So when people see others receiving good things in easier ways, the judgment program gets triggered hard for sure. For sure. I think that's why things like these AI robots, these AI characters, you know, AI chatbots, AI dating profiles, all of these, you know, bots you can use now to message someone as if they were a real life companion are blowing up because people desire this connection so badly, they're willing to pay for an artificial version of it. Um, and even going further than that, in a society that is valuing more than ever before, <laughs> perfect. I, I know what Courtney Ryan's doing, so no hate to her, but I really do think like um the again the problem is is like if you're watching NPC trendsetters, the trending girls, as your replacement for a relationship, like do you know what I'm saying? If you're watching porn as a replacement of a relationship, don't you think that's a super red flag in your own cognitive ability? Oh, Raiders Cat, you're always welcome. But like, don't you think that's a that's like a total cognitive dissonance? Do you hear yourself? You're like, oh, the guys will think porn is real. And I'm like, do they watch Die Hard and also think that's real? Do they watch Name Tom Cruise movie here and think that's also real? Like, I'm confused. Action and a lack of acceptance of any sort of uncertainty or flaw. You know, these AI programs, whether it be a bot, a dating profile, um, a girl pretending to be a bot, serve a bigger purpose that our society seems to be moving towards, and that is perfection. Of course, there are men who are single by choice, and it's not a single and lonely type of thing. Um, and there are men who are in relationships who are paying for this kind of thing, too. True. But I think people are so fatigued by dating now, understandably so, and so tired of wasting all their time, effort, energy, money. Do a court style dating, take it very seriously, give people one to three dates or one to three months and then dump them. If they're not your person, move on. If you're not ready to be a dateable person, move on. But no, y'all wanna move in and date and share leases and do all this stuff and wing it for two years and then you're like, oh, I'm exhausted. Or you wanna have one night stands, I'm so bored by everybody. Like literally, either take dating very seriously and cut bullshit out right away or hold on to the idea, you know what I mean? That like, oh, this is going to work. Did I ever tell you the story about how I was on – when I go to Cali, sometimes I get on the dating apps before I got engaged to have my brothers and my family swipe through matches for me. So I was there and this guy who's like friends with Logan Paul, he's like a star boxer, he like swiped on me. And I was like, no. I was like, no. I'm not an LA girl. He didn't swipe on me. My brothers were like, nah, he just swiped right on everybody. And I was like, cool. What the fuck is the point of that? If men are out here swiping right on every girl, why? What is the point of that? Because when you actually get a girl who's like, oh, this guy might be into me. Cool. Maybe we have something in common. You know what I mean? Like, and that, like, it's not, why would you do that? Like, I don't understand. Because they're not serious about dating. And apps are mostly hookup machines, or if you're really lucky, they get to be your forever. I know a few people actually in my audience who met their forever people on an app, so it can work. I fully believe in the tool, but it is a tool, and you're with a bunch of people who are there for different reasons. That they are willing to just pay for something that is certain, something that is perfect, and something that they really don't have to work for. And while I understand what is causing this, I still think it's an issue that our society is moving towards this direction and the extreme level that this kind of content is being pushed out at because they know it's profitable, because they know it'll make them money. I mean, TikTok <gasps> takes a huge percentage of live streams. I think it's 60 something percent. Mm. Um, so if the creator is making that much, well, TikTok's making even more. You know, and part of me wants to say, I can't believe men are paying for this, but I can believe it and I know the reasons why. 63% of men under 30 are electively single up from Raider, you said it's because of the swipe through rate on these apps. For sure though. But if you know the statistics, you know only 5% of women are usually swiping on the apps and you know there's a majority of men on the apps, then you know you have to create the reason and people would want to go out with you, right? But the people, okay. If you're lonely, and there are so many ways to be lonely. 
the relationship you have with your loneliness reflects the kind of people who are, who are attracted to you and who you attract and the kind of energy you admit, you omit. You know what I mean? So loneliness is like a real phenomenon that human beings experience. We experience it on multiple levels. But in particular, we experience it on the literal, I am alone. So right now I'm alone in this room, but I'm not actually alone because I have you, the audience. But I, let's say I turn off this computer and my partner isn't home and I'm just alone in the house. Okay, that's a version of alone, but not loneliness, right? Loneliness can occur in two ways and very specifically to me, at least. Loneliness, like I am so lonely. I have no one, not one person that I feel like sees me. Or, man, I'm really lonely. I'm lonely. I got good friends. They see me. They see parts of me, but I'm lonely in that companionship way. I'm lonely in a way that I want someone to see me romantically. But, you know, it will happen if it happens. There are different ways to have a relationship with loneliness. And every time I hear this, to, like, this kind of complaint, I feel like it's coming from a place of I'm so desperate and I'm alone and no one sees me. But why aren't you having the relationship with loneliness that is more reasonable? If you're lonely because you have absolutely no friends and no family and no one in the world that literally sees you even a little bit, that's kind of insane. That means you have failed on every front being a basic human being. Because in my mind, and this is Brittany's definition, being able to see you should be as simple as, do you love D&D as much as I love D&D? That's a person seeing a part of you. If you love YouTube and they love YouTube and you guys like the same YouTubers, that's a version, a part that they can see. If, they, if you're telling me in the world you can't even be seen for your hobbies or the version of you that likes an anime, something is like majorly wrong. And it's probably that you don't see yourself enough to convey it to other people. And then there's that other hurdle of loneliness, which is, okay, so all my friends and family see parts of me. And of course, they don't see me fully because, you know, but man, I really wish I had a partner. Okay. Is it, I wish I had a partner. If I don't have a partner, I'm failed as a human. Or is it, man, I can't believe um, that I might be lucky one day enough to come across a person that will help see me in a way that makes me feel truly seen like in a way that is full and warm and loving and complete I can't wait to do that for someone else that is wholesome and beautiful and loving but instead these same men that are so angry at the dating market are listening to fresh and fit some of the loneliest people I've ever seen they're watching Andrew Tate they're watching people who abuse and are malicious towards women they're grumpy and angry look if you don't want to date women Cool. If you want a woman there as a prize, cool. Make it clear to the women that they're just prizes. But if you're talking about real companionship, love, a good person to share your life with, that is very hard to come by. Most people are settling for marriages. So this, like these statistics that are coming out, like men are more alone than ever. The women who were stuck in those marriages prior were very alone. You can be lonely in a marriage. So men have to understand if women are, let's say, the cause of divorce, like they always say, is it because they have been lonely in their marriages and you guys just don't want to admit that because so many of our mothers and fathers settled in theirs? And so we think, why don't we have to? How many of you even have parents that are together? And with the way y'all casually judge me or harshly judge me for how harsh I am on cheating, I'm not surprised you guys aren't inviting stability into your life. Like, I don't even understand with everyone being so casual about cheating and lying and skirting around facts with their partners. Like, what are you even looking for? I'm lonely. I'm lonely for what? What do you what do you think you're owed in your loneliness? Like, I don't even understand this conversation. It's so funny. It's just like so funny to me how people think they're owed romantic love. As if you're not asking a whole other human being to literally melt lives with you and your lonely ass. If your loneliness is ugly and desperate, why would you want to put that on someone else? Unless you have a codependent, toxic, romantic, in quotation, way of looking at love. Like, oh, if they love me, they'll save me from my depression and my loneliness. This isn't Twilight, okay? From 51% in 2019, and experts are blaming erotic alone time online as a major culprit. 
As of 2022, Pew Research Center found 30% of U.S. adults are neither married, living with a partner, <clears throat> nor engaged in a committed relationship. Nearly half of all young adults are single. They don't want it. You don't need it. You want it as a fun pastime. You don't need it. There's just no way. I'm sorry, as somebody who hasn't, like, uh, my mom has 10 kids, and I'm about to be the third one to get married. None of my siblings are ready to be spouses. They're not ready to love a person in the way that a responsible person should love someone. It takes a lot of effort to responsibly love someone else and care for someone else. They're not ready. The world is no longer ready. And you can keep blaming the apps and blaming everything else. But there is something deeper happening that has nothing to do with whatever the world is tempting you with. That is the aftermath. The temptation is the aftermath. It's the cope. Lakara says unironically, unironically, I think a lot of these red pillars are secretly gay because they seem so des seems to de despise women and only respect men. Um, <laughs> snog your hot homies then. I mean, I definitely think ultimately, um, ultimately, I think they're just in denial that they actually want to be in a relationship. I think a lot of people want the image because they think it gives them clout. Like, oh yeah, I found a husband, I found a wife. But I don't think people really want to be in love or in a relationship. They don't want to be good to each other. They want to. They don't want to think about the other person over themselves. They don't want to be considerate. Like even, oh my God, I've been consuming so much Andrew Tate. I'm so sick of this man's face. And so much of the way they talk about women, so much of the red pillars, like that bubble talks about women. It's like, I get that women want to trick themselves into thinking one day these men will love me and the way I want to be loved. But like, my bro, it's just sad. It's sad all around. If you want slash need to be in a loving relationship that is healthy, you will make the effort to get there solo and to meet up with somebody along the way, or you'll you know, come together and do it together as a team. But there has to be a sense of healthiness and happiness and kindness involved in this. You know, like you do you, okay? Stay in your toxic relationships. But it is bullshit when people tell me like, oh, I want a loving relationship. Really? Like look at Hollywood and the way, man, Hollywood's all divorce, all cheating, all infidelity. Look at how Hollywood is. Everyone will blame different reasons for this. Ultimately. There is a sadness in the human consciousness that exists and no one is tackling it because it is too hard. It is too hard to admit to myself, I might not be ready to actually handle a real relationship in a consistent way. If you want to be long term, if you want to be with somebody for 50 years, that is a huge commitment. Huge sacrifices are going to be made. And I don't mean who's who watches what TV show on a Saturday night. I mean, literally... You and that person have to be like you guys against the world. You have to put things aside and do it together. Okay? Otherwise, someone's always going to feel alone, lonely. If you want to stop feeling lonely in your marriages and lonely in your lives, you have to know why you feel lonely in the first place. And it's not just if I only had a girlfriend. It's not that. That is so superficial. Single. 34% of women and a whopping 63% of men. And only half of single men are actively seeking out relationships or even casual dates, according to Pew Research. And that figure is steadily declining. What is causing this? Again, as I mentioned, isolation, social media, porn, men falling behind, women's rising standards. There are men who are giving up on dating altogether. There are men who are trying and failing because they don't measure up to okay so <clears throat> the one time in history women have high standards for you and you can't fucking cut it go in a ditch like do you hear yourselves like the one time women are like hey could you like maybe be nice to us and uh i don't know maybe be like kind and sh and everyone's just like mm, no hey do you mind if you're like not threatened by every male friend i have or hey do you mind if like i work too or hey do you mind like What's standard? What's the standard? Like, do you, like, women's rising standards are the reason men are single? Boo? Who? 
be single. And every time I hear Jordan Peterson or any of these men say, oh my God, the rise of single men will bring violence to the country because men need women to calm them down. Gross. Disgusting. Go watch a sunset. Are you listening to yourself? You are such babies. Grow the f up. If your whole purpose in life is to serve a woman, get on your fing knees. If your whole purpose in life is to be a good partner, then be one. If your whole purpose is to literally like what your life isn't fulfilled unless you have a woman, what what are we talking about? What is the conversation? You hate the thing you're not worthy of? Be worthy of it. And what does it even mean to be worthy? Are you really gonna like, oh, this actually coincides so perfectly with the Barbie movie? I just saw it. It's good. I have a video about it coming out hopefully tomorrow, maybe. Depends on the recording time. But like, that's what the, basically the story is at the end. You don't have to be Ken and Barbie. You can be just Barbie or just Ken. Like, are, is your personality so dead set on being partnered that you've lost yourself in this illusion of a relationship? And you wonder why divorce is so high. You wonder why people are settling. You wonder why people feel lonely in their marriages. Please, uh, please. Oh, you know what's even funnier? Is how many fun single people have tried to, and people in toxic marriages have tried to attack my relationship. And I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. And they're like, oh, but what about this? And what about this? What about this? Look, bros, okay? Don't be mad at me because I'm happy in my relationship. Question why you're not happy in yours. That's the irony. As people don't believe, some people obviously, can't believe that I'm happy with my relationship because they're like, no, there's something wrong. There's something, got to be something wrong. And I was like, man, you all are toxic. Who did you decide to marry? Don't blame me because you're unhappy. Lakara says, ironic, unironically. Oh, no, no, you, you said, ah, oh, good point. They might be in denial. Maybe they secretly want a loving relationship, but that's sort of not cool in their circle. Yeah. It's like, I think people, they want things that are easy. And relationships are anything but easy. So they're upset that they can't have them because it's hard to maintain them. That's why money isn't enough. That's why good pussy isn't enough. It's not enough. Kay says the reason they feel lonely is because they're leaving themselves in search for external happiness. Exactly. Exactly. Relationships are kind of like the new materialism. Relationships could be like the new Bugattis. Bugattis? You could be like, oh, instead of money, I'm just going to get pussy. Sad. Just sad, bros the standards that women now demand from men because they have become more successful you know as women have become more successful they're expecting more from men and a lot of men just are not at that point where women are expecting them to be and i'm not necessarily saying that's justified you guys know how i feel about it if you've been on my channel for a while i've talked about that in numerous other videos um, but again we can't deny the reasons why men are choosing to pay for this type of content online and engage and pay for these things online instead of a real life human connection. And again, I'm not making excuses or justifications, mm. but I think a lot of men feel like they have just tried so hard, they continue to fail or get rejected, and they find it easier to, again, pay for or sign. They're not aware. They're not, they're just not self-aware enough. I'm sorry. Mm. When we, okay, so in um, the statistics she's often read on her channel, which again, I like Courtney well enough, is always like um, women date up, not down, blah, blah, blah. So women want men who have like a college degree if they have one. That seems to be true for the women that I know. So I don't have a college degree. But in my bubble, I think people would say like, oh, I, ex I think women who work expect their men to work. Like I don't expect my partner to work. I expect him to be a teammate with me and I expect us – I don't even expect me to work. I expect, I don't expect anyone to work. I expect us to make money for the relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't expect either of us to work. I expect there to be money in the relationship. So someone's got to work and something's got to happen. But it's not like, oh, you're the man, you work. I'm the woman, I work. It's not like, there's not an expectation of a role. It's more like, hey, what do we want to do at every stage in our life? What we do today might not be what we do tomorrow. How do we become successful as a couple, as a unit, as times move forward, right? So there's like this, this uh, lack of awareness where you have to know a bubble you're in to know what you're striving for. Like in my farm brother bubble, like my conservative brother, obviously the expectation is that his wife will never work. So they have four kids and he supports the four kids on his income, which means he works 12 to 15 hours a day usually. That's like a basic, pretty normal day for him. 
And he does that because he's an entrepreneur. He has his own business and it's up to him to go get money. So there is no time off. He does not take time off. Even if he gets like a bonus or something or gets extra work in one month and makes extra money, they put it into his savings and he he works just like normal. He doesn't take time off. The other day I was on the phone with him, finally catching up with him after a long time. And he goes, oh, I got to go. I just got a job call. Okay, bye. He hung up on me. Bam. $8,000 job right there Boop, for the month. Awesome. Okay. He uh, is not college educated. He's a high school graduate and he works in machining and he managed to figure out how to machine parts from home so he never has to leave the house and he can work from home but he did that without a college education makes well over six figures and figured out how to do that but never he just never rests he only rests if he has to go see family he only rests if there's an emergency he only rests if like there's an obligation you know what i mean Vash is here. Hi, Vash. Says, you work as a unit. Yeah, like I want to work as a unit with my spouse. But if you have like a Andrew Tate or Fresh and Fit Bubble or any of those people, the way they talk about their partners, like that's not what they're looking for. So when I hear these lonely men say, I can't keep up with women, are you saying you emotionally can't keep up with women? Because honestly, that's what I see. Like that's what I see the issue is. I find that women, not on average, because I don't know, but anecdotally, seem to be more interested in a little bit more introspection and I find that men are falling behind on introspection more than anything else. I'm finding that men aren't thinking past their I made money, past X, Y, Z. Like they're not thinking, even in this situation, you're lonely. Why? That has to do with introspection. If you keep looking at the world or women to fix your loneliness, why? Why aren't you looking inward? Why aren't you looking at yourself, right? And so women have been doing that for a while longer than men. So of course, we're going to be a little bit of ahead. But that's what I see to be the biggest complaint from my female friends is that men aren't keeping up introspectively. Sign up for something that they know they will get an automatic return on, um, even though they're spending money on it. And they're willing to spend money rather than continue to try to date <coughs> real life women. It's scary and it's sad, but it's the reality. They mm. started calling OnlyFans Lonely Fans for a reason. There are so many men who want this companionship and connection so badly that they're willing to pay for it. And they're even willing to pay for it from something that is not even a real human. I think that right there tells you. I will say there is a category of men and women that we all know exist and they are socially challenged in a way that is so unique to them that i think they're the perfect example of people that would benefit immensely from these organ like these businesses right i think there's some sort of kindness in that where you might be because there's always going to be a part of the population that just like needs some sort of support it's very hard to describe what kind of person this is because it's not going to be exactly the person we're all thinking. They're very specific. One time I had a caller who was kind of like this. They were really unique, but they basically did calls with me to like hang out with me, but they didn't want to talk to me. They were a girl. They just wanted to play games while I edited photos or did some work. And after a while, I told her like, hey, I really like you and everything, but I don't this is the truth of it. I'm just not stimulated enough by this interaction. I don't feel fulfilled by it. And I feel like it's kind of not what I want to offer as a service. But I know that she could have benefited from one of these services. So she could have, and she wasn't, look, she's not going to, She her parents are going to have to take care of her. She's not going to go out into the world and become a CEO. There's like a very specific energy. She's an adult. She was in her 20s. But she's like the kind of person that like lives in books or the kind of person that like lives in technology because the technology is the safest way for them to exist without bringing harm to themselves. So I don't know what that is, right? Because it's not like they have a specific mental disability, but there is some sort of like unique challenge to them. So like they're really sweet and there's nothing like evil about anybody here. There's like, but their loneliness is a, an a, like they didn't choose to have that brain. And so I want to say like there's something really 
wholesome about these organizations existing or like sex work existing for people who need access to care and love that they just genuinely wouldn't find. And though they could cope well on their own, it would still be nice to get it. So I will say, I think like there's a part of the populace that actually needs these services and then, and it's a healthy kind of outlet. And then there's a part of the population that has a really negative relationship with these outlets, like an addiction, like, I hate that I have to call an OnlyFans girl, but like, oh, I want to do it. And it's like, maybe there's that category of person. And so my heart really goes out to the people that are somewhat like, they don't know which one they are in. I think my heart goes out to the people that are like, where do I go from here? Which is again, like you should book a call with me because I'm better than even life advice itself. Like I'm telling you right now, like self-help and all that stuff, like all those like typical advice books are great for normies. But if you're in this situation, you're obviously not very normal. I think normal people know why they're single. I think normally healthy people know that dating isn't guaranteed. I think if you're genuinely concerned about the fact that you're single, and you're really ready to work on it, then you'd recognize like you're kind of abnormal. Because even the weird BDSMers have relationships. The weird furries are having relationships. The weird this is having a relationship. There's something to be said about the category of type of person that is in all backgrounds who still isn't realizing why they're single. And it's ultimately the answer could be you haven't found them yet. Like I told you guys, I have a great brother He's amazing, but he's really waiting for the right girl. He's dated so many girls. So many girls have been interested in him, but he's not finding the one. And I told him, it doesn't matter if you find her now or at 45 or 46 or 48. You're still gonna have 30 years with her. But I get it. He's looking for a very specific person. He went from being lonely for the wrong reasons to accepting that he was lonely, but eh, better to wait for her than to settle for somebody else. Because, you know, in his religion, they don't get divorced. So he really wants to make sure he's not going to settle for somebody that isn't his person. You know what I mean? There's a healthy way to have a relationship with loneliness. And I think that people can blame technology all they want, but it's not the reason. The state that our society is in and the fact that we have a lot of work to do. And I don't know about you. I am personally <sighs> terrified of AI. I've just seen too many scary things. Um, and it's something that I really struggle with. It freaks me out every time I see it. And now that I'm seeing real people pretend to be AI, it's a weird crossover and I don't like it and it freaks me out. Mm. And you can let me know your opinion down in the comments, but this is just one of the strangest things I have ever seen gain popularity over on TikTok. I knew immediately when I saw it that I needed to react to it and I don't really have a solution here. This is not an advice. I do. I have a solution. I have advice. I'll tell you this right now. Okay. You have to have a relationship with your consciousness. You have to know exactly who you are and why you think being single matters. I know the solution. Look inward. That is the solution. It's a hard solution. It's the only solution. There's only one solution. Look inwards. Be introspective. Think for a f***ing second. Think. Don't complain. Don't point fingers. Think. Why do you have this relationship with your concept around relationships? Why do you have this relationship with loneliness? It's no one's fault. You cannot look at the world and blame it for your own relationship with yourself. The relationship is with you. You can blame the world. That's a good cope, right? But if the world wasn't there, you'd still have it. You'd have the complex because you're still figuring out who you are. Until you figure out who you are and find your footing, it will always feel like something is happening to you. It will always feel like a pressure is suffocating you. And your solution is not to marry a foreign lady in a different country. Your solution is not to just marry a rich man and take his money. The solution can be better, healthier, more wholesome type video I just really wanted to share my opinion about it and I know it seems a little bit doom and gloom uh, but I think sometimes it's just nice to be aware of what is happening and I'll link some videos down in the description of videos that I've done that do have solutions and ways that we can try to move away from all of our relationships being artificial or online and actually you know 
prioritizing in-person human connection, whether it be platonic or mm. romantic. But great, very great. interesting nonetheless. One of the weirdest things I think I've ever reacted to. You guys can let me know what you think down I love in her the talk. comments if you like this video or found it I helpful. Wish she actually sure. I wish she actually had reacted more to the content. You know what I mean? Because it's a lot of fun. Like being silly and fun and light. Like all of that is fun. Fun is not the reason the world is ending. It's not the reason the divorce rate is up. Fun and laughter and sexiness and orgasms are not the reasons the world is ending. Okay? The world is ending because everyone has lacked introspection and refuses to admit that they could have been wrong and refuses to admit that their solution isn't one size fits all. Okay? You got to find the solution that works for you. Can the solution be BDSM? Pash says. Um, the solution will be BDSM as a tool for some people. Okay. Speaking of which, Vash, great comment because the next video we're watching is Kinky Singles. Hold on. Try and find love on the button. In my head, in my head, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Thank you.